Rusty, how are you? Always good to see you. Always great to see you. Um, so many questions. Uh, I, I am curious, what is it like for you right now after spending, I mean, I saw you on the set of Faster like a decade ago. I've seen, I've watched your career progress. And now you're at the point after so many years of being able to say, I want to make this and it gets made. What is that actually like? Uh, well, it's a great position to be in, Steve. Um, you know, you, you and I and our colleagues, we, we not only I feel we love what we do and we are passionate about what we do and about movies and entertainment uh, on many different levels, but I think that we are also aware of the challenges in our industry and how actually difficult it is to actually get a movie made uh, from beginning to end. Uh, so to be in the position that I'm in today, you and I met many moons ago on Faster uh, as I was trying to find my way uh, in Hollywood. And um, so, yeah, so to be in the position that I'm in today where I have, uh, I, I do have the ability to say, I want to make this movie and we do get it made. But I will tell you this, the, what, what allows for that to happen is an incredibly talented group and cadre of people around me uh, who are great at what they do um, in the various positions that I have them in and also have great relationships with the studios too. So, you know, yes, it's the ability to say, I wanna make this movie and we get it made, but also what's also important, and you know this, Steve, is that we have to, this is where with the studio, whether it's with Netflix or Disney or Universal or Warner Brothers DC, it, it all comes down to, you know, you still gotta figure out a pathway uh, where the movie is going to hopefully, fingers crossed, um, be accountable in terms of the math uh, and make the studio money. Not only that, but then also make sure that you're delivering a movie for the audience. So that's a long answer to say, it's a great position to be in. Uh, I don't take it for granted. And I always wanna make sure that, um, you know, through this, because there's gonna come a time where, um, there's, there's gonna come a time where, you know, a lot of times, by the way, if it's a movie that I really, really wanna make, sometimes it's not as easy as just, okay, great, let's go make it. Uh, there's a lot of challenges sometimes that you have to face and have to try and figure out. And then sometimes uh, the movie just doesn't get made. <laughs> oh, I've heard that from so many people. Um, yeah. Question about Red Notice. Um, I think that a lot of people don't realize what it really takes to, to do these action set pieces in these movies and the, really the time and energy. And could you sort of maybe talk a little bit about crafting, say, like the mind sequence in the third act, like what it really takes to make something like that? It's challenging, man. It, it, it's hard to do, but also it, it's, it's what we love to do. What we all love to do uh, is challenge ourselves, create these action sequences in the mind scene in particular, the mind shaft that you're talking about. That is an extraordinary action sequence that quite frankly, what, um, inspired by Indiana Jones and Raiders of the Lost Ark and movies like that, and that one in particular. Um, and that, that is vintage Ross and Thurber, um, having a love and an affinity for vintage movies like that, that inspired him as he wrote the script. But you know, with that, we had drone shots, we had, there was a lot going on. And I think that, you, you know, and I, I appreciate you bringing that up because a lot of times um, these action sequences will come and they will go, but the key is making sure that the audience feels something in it. Even if they can't articulate sometimes like, well, there was something unique about that. And how did they get the camera to fly like that? Was it on a drone? How was it being controlled? Because a lot of times they don't ask and don't need to know about the mechanics, but it, it was very, very challenging. I think that with Red Notice, um, I, I think with Red Notice, we struck a nice chord between great action, great comedy, which isn't always uh, the easiest thing to do. And I also think, you know, I gotta tell you, man, and as a lover of movies, I know you, you would appreciate this, is I, I've really enjoyed, you talked about my growth and you know you and I have it essentially grown together over the years, uh, but I've really enjoyed watching Rawson grow too as well. Rawson Thurbar, writer director, because he really is in that unique cadre of directors that are rare where they write from the beginning to the end, it's only their script. And then they're the, the, the director too as well. So he is, really done a great job and I'm very, very proud of him too. And I think he did a great movie. Oh, this is gonna be a massive hit for you guys. Um, 
a million other questions, but I'm out of time. So I'm just going to say congrats. Oh man, let's and, do one more. Oh, uh, I do have another one last question. Um, <laughs> I, may have, I may have heard through the grapevine that you recently watched the director's cut of uh, Black Adam. And I'm just curious, obviously without visual effects, it's still in a rough state, but I am curious, what was your reaction? No, you have experience in the editing room. You know what it looks like, you know, you can tell, but what was your reaction watching like an early cut of the film? I think we're in a really good place. I think now's the time where, um, now's the time there's, we take our time yet, there has to be some expediency to it because we do have to have the movie ready by next summer. I think that Jama delivered a great first cut. And, you know, Black Adam was the kind of movie that it just, from beginning, it just, it had the makings and the bones to be something unique. And it all started, I think, with the ambition, but then it all started with our director, Jama Colette Serra. And I think that he is an ambitious director. I, he, again, comes from that cadre of very talented Spanish filmmakers who want to get in and want to disrupt industry and disrupt craft. And he does it, I think, in such a great way. I also like that um, at this point of the cut, there is... Um, there's a clear and defining anchor to Black Adam's code. And I think that's really important uh, as we look to build out this, um, as we look to build out the character, as we look to build out the franchise, as we also look, out, look to build out the JSA and introduce them and launch them properly too as well. So uh, I'm, I am happy yet not satisfied and we will continue to Put the work in and um and the teaser that we showed uh about three weeks ago i think is, is a good indicator of what's to come cannot effing wait Dude, that note, i can't wait for you to see it you're gonna fucking lose your mind in a lot of this stuff like <laughs> props <laughs> like i did yeah, you, you will Dude, I, I, I really cannot wait. And I know how long you've put in the, the decade to getting this thing made i know what it means i i'm really so excited so am I, man. Always good talking to you. See you, buddy. Thanks, man. Later.